My name is Tony Gabrielli Phelan. I am with Daniel's Undergraduate Career Services, and we have a lot of our staff here. So I'm going to have them all introduce themselves as well. Um, Mackenzie and Lisa, when they come up, they'll they'll talk about themselves. But um, Kelly, I don't know if you want to say hi. Hi everyone. I'm Kelly Sessions, and I'm one of the career advisors for undergraduate business students. Um, okay. Yeah. Hi, I'm Pat Peral. I run Career Services for Daniel. So thanks for being here and being part of the series. And then we have Janine over here. Janine Todd, manager of enrollment services. So if you're going through secondary admission, pay attention to Janine's emails. Um, so we're going to get started. And thank you all for coming. Thank you for staying on top of your Daniels professional development program stuff. Um, if you have any questions about that, let us know. Come talk to Career Services. Check your Canvas page. Um, but we're going to kind of trade off up here about different parts of the international business major and um, just different factors that go into it. So with your international business major, <coughs> and did, would you want to do this one? Yeah, at least if you want to do this oh, slide. <laughs> Sorry, I'm like, I'm going to blow my nose. Um, and I'll introduce myself. Hi, I'm Lisa Viktorovich. I'm the assistant dean for undergraduate program, so I've probably saw a lot of you during orientation. Um, so really talking about the major. So the first thing I'm going to say, if you're interested in this major, um, you probably really want to be passionate about globalization, right? So have a real passionate about internalization, globalization. Um, really focusing on thinking globally about the business world. Um, so this major is not discipline specific. So you're not going to focus on marketing. You're not going to focus on finance or accounting. Um, really broad, how does this focus in impacting the world? thinking about gaining international experience. Um, so one of the things that you don't have to, you're not required to study abroad as part of this major, but you really should study abroad. Um, additionally, another thing you want to think about is you know, a second language, right? So gaining really good proficiency with a second language. Um, additionally, focusing on a particular area of interest, right? So maybe you're interested in international business in Asia, maybe you're interested in international business in South America. And really, from the beginning, thinking about where your interest and your passion lies and building upon that as you move throughout. Okay. Um, so skills developed within this major. Um, so diplomacy and negotiation skills. Um, so really thinking that, at the end of the day, any business that you're going to do really boils down to negotiation. Right? So if you think about international business, um, so what's going on right now in the world? I don't know if any of you are paying attention to the political world. Um, but what's one of the big major headlines that's going on right now? Russia. Russia. What else? What else was a big a, a big thing that's going on right now? Uh, South Korea. The military activities. Uh, I'm thinking about something else. <laughs> uh, the new travel ban went in effect today. The travel ban. How's the trade immigration ban? How about trade trade agreements? Right? Trade agreements? That sound better? <laughs> yeah, right? Um, so the trade agreements. So really thinking about the trade agreements um, and how as a business person will you help a company negotiate and sell your product or your service internationally. Um, so understanding these trade regulations, especially in today's circumstances where things are really subject to change. Um, really appreciating diverse views. So how we do things in the United States is very differently than how things business is conducted in Asia. It's probably very different with how business is conducted in you know, South America. Um, so for instance, in other countries, it's very common to bribe foreign officials to do business. Right? Um, in the United States, it is illegal to bribe foreign officials to do business. Thinking about those different dimensions. Um, world events, um, political influences, again, a lot of you brought up different political things that's going to be really important to international business um, and being having the ability to adapt right, um, to these different cultural sensitivities, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so that's, uh, it's a very broad major, so I don't know if you probably felt like I didn't really tell you anything, um, but it is a very broad major, and as we go through, we're definitely going to highlight the importance of either double majoring, right? So international business, it doesn't have a lot of credit, so it pairs well if you double major or definitely having a minor. All right, so going into internship opportunities. So a lot of this is kind of up in the air right now as far as working with um, 
government agencies and things like that as we just talked about. Um, we A lot is changing, we don't know a whole lot, so that's gonna be a factor in the things that we're talking about today and the types of careers and places you can go to have those careers. Um, but some things to think about, so foreign companies that are operating in the U.S can be good for looking at internship opportunities and starting to explore and get in with those different companies. Um, government agencies and government relations, again, that's gonna be kind of depending on what happens here. Um, there's always gonna be government positions, but things are changing so much that we just wanna keep an eye on that. Um, and talking with Corbell, um, the School of International Studies, um, that talk with them a lot too if you're interested in this major. Um, they have, you know, a lot of internships through them as well, and they do a lot of sessions on, like, how do you make a federal resume versus a business resume and things like that. We'll talk more about that later. International banks, so knowing which banks are international and potentially getting in with them, um, getting an internship with them. Multinational corporations, kind of the same thing. And then there's also the nonprofit side. So you don't always have to work for a for-profit or even for a government um, a government organization, you can kind of look at the nonprofit side of things. Um, I've, I've known a lot of students who have gone even more Peace Corps type of thing. So, so keep an eye on those opportunities as well. And you all have a handout on common career paths for this major. So I would say most of our students in Daniels who have this major end up with focusing a little bit more on that first one, the multinational corporation employees. So analyst roles for large global companies or banks, consulting, management training programs. We have a lot of people go into that for different companies, larger companies and project management. Um, so that's kind of where a lot of people direct their focus when they have this major. But if you think about it, if you just say, as Lisa started to allude to, if you just say international business, that doesn't always give you a very specific focus. So you might end up applying and looking at these companies and when they say, okay, well, what type of role within those companies are you interested in? That's where your double major comes in. That's where maybe your minor comes in. And um, we'll have these guys talk a little bit about where they're gonna end up. We have a couple students that are gonna come up and speak too. But um, so let's say you have international business as your major, but finance as your minor. Then you know, okay, I wanna work for a large global company, but in the finance department or in a financial role. So that's just an example. Um, but be thinking about that too, if you're really interested in this major. Um, we talked about government agencies, development organizations, so NGOs, volunteer organizations, things like that. Um, and then there's the entrepreneurship side, which is a little bit more rare, and I think that that could probably come later on in your career, unless you have a specific passion, specific focus, and you know exactly what you wanna do at this point. We do have an entrepreneurship minor, um, and we can talk to you more about that as well. But yes, and Pat's gonna chime in too. So I'll just add for the things like the Foreign Service, right, so that's obviously through the State Department, um, but you know, an NGO, right, you know, what are some examples of NGOs? So United Nations, UNICEF, the World Bank, uh, the IMF, right? So these are all non-governmental organizations, but they're global. Um, and there's also regional ones, right? So the Asian Development Bank, um, the Latin American Development Bank. And for a lot of these, um, you can basically improve your candidacy by having language skills. So almost all of them will say, you know, if you speak certain languages, you're actually gonna actually be able to move forward in the process a lot faster than other folks. And also, the hiring process is quite lengthy. So you actually have to plan things out. It's like a year-long hiring process, but a lot of them have uh, basically early, you know, kind of leadership programs for folks coming out of college. Yeah, and keep an eye out as well. Um, like the CIA sometimes comes here to recruit and do demonstrations. So in Pioneer Careers, those events will always be listed. So keep an eye on the events tab in there um, for when we bring different organizations to campus. But I, I always think that one's really cool that they come here to recruit. So, um, so yeah, moving on. Um, job titles of recent graduates. So this is just to show you the broad spectrum of areas that people go into. So we've got everything from something called a global intern to an English teacher who went overseas to teach English to kids overseas. And um, we've got people who are in operations, we've got people who are in that management development, kind of that training program in a larger company. Um, 
client services coordinator, associate sales representative. So some people go in more the sales route, which is a great career. So just so you guys know, um, do you've got to do your research if you're going to do this major, even more so than other majors, just because this is such a broad range that there's not really a set path for you necessarily. So um, let's see. And another thing to mention when students come in and, and talk to me about wanting to find an internship or a full-time job and we walk through the job search sites and pioneer careers, it's different than accounting where you can type in accounting internship and things pop up. If you try to type in international business internship, that's going to be a mess of stuff that comes up. So um, this is helpful if you're looking at specific job titles. Mackenzie, do you want to? Yes, one. So we'll swap out. I'm Mackenzie Moeller. For those of you who I haven't met before, I'm the manager of academic advising, um, one floor up. So if you're a first year and you haven't come in for advising yet, you should do that soon. Um, we wanted to highlight um, one of our recent grads. Matthew Politic graduated last year um, in international business. He was a fantastic example of a student who made international business work for him and for his passions. Um, he actually got a, a very competitive internship with Nike, and he's now living up in Oregon working for Nike in more of a technical role. And you might be saying, well, that's not really an international job because I know a lot of students who come in to tell me that they're interested in international business say, you know, I want to travel, I want to live abroad. But like Tony was saying, a lot of it's going to be working for a company that might be a global company. Nike is all over the world, but understanding the global context of that company and working for them in a specific location. So he might end up working internationally, you know, later on in his career, but he understood how to build himself as an undergrad to get the internships and get that experience to align himself for his ideal career path, which is what he ended up doing. So we were really excited for him. Uh, and I just uh, emailed him a couple months ago to ask him why he chose international business. And um, that's what he sent back. So you can all see that. Um, so yeah, he's currently business systems analyst for Nike. Um, so what I'm here to talk about a little bit more is kind of how the major works as far as um, classes and advising. How many of you started at DU before fall 2016? <laughs> and we've talked, you know how it works, yeah. Um, one over here too, okay. So um, for the two of you, um, you have the option to change to the new major or um, stay on the old major, which was nine classes and included a couple from Corbell, a couple from Daniels, and then an elective. For the rest of you who started in fall 2016, the major did um, change going from fall 2015 to 2016, so it's now 10 classes, one more and it's grouped into what um, are called clusters. So you have a little bit more choice within each cluster for how to specialize this major to, like I said, work for you. So within the <coughs> International Studies cluster, you can choose certain classes that are taught by the Corbell School of International Studies. Um, so if there's some upper level ones that are specifically focused in a region that you're interested in or you know, a, a global economy versus a, a class on global politics, if you want to be able to pick and choose the things that interest you, you have the flexibility to do that within the International Studies cluster working with Corbell. And then within the business, basically International Business class cluster, um, you have the option to take you know, classes like International Finance, International Marketing, International Law, International Management. So you might not end up taking all of those like they used to on the old major, but you might again pick and choose and say, I'm really thinking that I want to go into more of a technical role, so it makes sense for me to take classes more like finance and maybe legal studies as opposed to marketing. So you can kind of pick and choose what works for you. And then there's also a new capstone, which students on the old curriculums are definitely encouraged to sign up for. Um, so the capstone is being taught for the first time this fall. It's under the legal studies class and it's um, business and global values. So looking at how international business works from kind of a, a ethical legal perspective worldwide. Um, and we're really excited that that's the first time that we're gonna teach that capstone. Um, it's something that will be required and I'm thinking they might change topics, but we'll kind of find out as we go. 
Something that you guys should all know heading into this major is that since the major change was new from 2015 to 2016, there's a little bit of ambiguity right now in helping you understand your requirements for your major because of that element of you get to pick and choose. So um, one of the things that you'll end up doing quite a bit in addition to working with me and the other advisors upstairs is also reaching out to Dr. Persa. He is a professor who technically is housed in hospitality management but he oversees the international business major. You might have realized looking around the website or looking through you know, the offices over in Daniels, there's not an international business department. It doesn't exist. Um, international business used to be housed under the management umbrella, um, but now it's under the, the supervision, supervision of Dr. Parsa. So anytime you have questions about, hey, I found this really cool class that's taught in sociology about global public health, can I take that as part of these classes? Because I'm interested in looking at you know, that role within international business. Overall, he's gonna be the person to approve substitutions and things like that. So um, you probably, if you're a declared international business major, have gotten some emails from Dr. Parsa. He'll send out usually um, a quarterly email about things that are happening. So just make sure you read through those and connect with him in addition <coughs> to us. Um, as Lisa said, taking a language is a really, really good idea. You're not required to, but if you're wanting to work in a, a truly international role where you're able to converse with other people, continuing to study language is going to be really important. And choosing to study abroad in a country that might speak that language. Um, for instance, two years ago I had a student graduate, his name was Alex Sheffrin, and he studied abroad in Hong Kong, worked on his Chinese, and he ended up, um, through doing research um, for a thesis, ended up getting a job offer in Hong Kong after he graduated. I heard from someone that now he's over in Silicon Valley, so you can see that you know you might bounce around quite a bit, both globally and um, domestically. So you just want to make sure that you are a very versatile candidate for the kinds of things that you want to be pursuing, and you can make yourself versatile by picking classes that align with your interests. Um, which is basically what I was just saying. So. Um, like we've been saying, we really encourage the minor. Um, just to give you a perspective of credits overall, you're required to have 185 credits to graduate with a business degree. Of those, 52 are in the business core, 52 to 60 are in the common core, 40 are in your major. So that should leave, depending on um, you know, credits that you've brought in, somewhere between 25 and 40 hours of electives. And so we want you to use those electives wisely to combine your interests with something that's going to make you a qualified candidate so that when you're sitting down to an interview and they say, all right, you studied international business, tell me about your skills, tell me about your interests, tell me about why you are an interesting candidate for me to hire, you want to be able to say more than, well, I, I like travel. <laughs> um, because that's something that they're, they're glad to know that personal bit about you, but they're gonna to wanna to know the skills that you bring to the company. So really, even if you don't do minors, if you just wanna selectively um, pick electives that build your skill set. If you want to have more of a technical skill set, taking some classes in analytics, taking a couple more classes in accounting, you don't always have to finish a full minor, but you want to be able to talk articulately about what you know when you're sitting down for an interview. Um, and just to go back again to why we're harping on this so much about having a minor and having other skill sets, um, you know, we, we want you to know that international business is one of the majors where our students who know what they want and who are very intentional about picking the internships and the opportunities that align with their interests, they, they find jobs, they you know are successful like Matt as a good example, um, but this is also a major where if you don't really step up and, and take your professional development seriously, it is an easy major for you to get to senior year and come sit in my office in you know this time, February, March, and say, so I don't know what I'm doing when I graduate. And we want to help you avoid that. So that's part of why you're here now, early on in your career. And we want to make sure that we keep that momentum going. So it's really important for you to keep the momentum of you coming here today and understanding your opportunities going by talking to all of us. OK, and then. OK, so um, this is a list of student groups and professional associations. and. This list could be a whole lot longer, too, um, because like we said before, it is such a broad major uh, that you can kind of specialize, as Mackenzie was saying, in maybe you're interested in a specific country, maybe you're interested in a specific industry, maybe you're interested 
in government versus business. And so some of these are through um, Corbell, some are more through Daniels. But this is just, and I know it's probably so small for you guys to read, but I wanted you to get a picture of like how many there actually are. Um, so if you have, and, and there are more than this, so we can help you find other options too if none of these look interesting to you, but um, everything from Denver Women in International Security to Students for Africa to the Peace Corps, um, Human Trafficking Center, Sustainable International Development Initiative. So, there are tons and tons of them. It just depends on your specific interest. And then events on campus related to the major. The Internationalization Summit is coming up on April 14th and that happens on campus. The Diversity Summit happens every year in January. Did anyone go to that? Good. It was, it's always a really, really good event. Um, anything on campus here, they always have great speakers, so keep an eye out for that. Um, Careers for a Cause, there's a career fair on April 19th, and that is through the Maine DU Career Center. So it's things like um, nonprofit, government, things like that. So if you're interested in that side of it and finding an internship in that side of it, that's when that career fair is happening. Um, and then check Corbell events on their website too, because you might have an interest in some of the stuff they're doing. There's a bit of overlap there. And there, actually a lot of their events are in Pioneer Careers, like I said before. All right, and Mackenzie mentioned um, Parsa, but he, this is his contact information if you need to get a hold of him. So um, he's a great guy, really nice. Um, so reach out to him if you need any help picking classes or um, talking about what you want your focus to be within international business. Anything that you guys want? That. Yeah, and we'll have you guys come up. So we brought a couple of students who are actually in the international business major right now, and I'll let them introduce themselves. Um, well, if you want to go first. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Noelle. Um, I'm a senior here, and I am obviously an international business major. Um, I'm from California. Um, what else? Uh, key internships that I've had. Um, I interned for Disney for a semester, for a quarter. Um, I have a current um, finance internship, and over a summer I spent um, a couple weeks working in Dublin at the Radisson Blue Hotel, um, working in the finance department there. Um, highly recommend doing some type of international experience, whether you study abroad or whether you intern abroad. Um, it's really valuable for this major. And you went on a really long study abroad. Yeah, so I went to South Africa for two quarters to study abroad. So why did you pick international business? Oh, um, that's a good question. Um, I picked international business because I knew I wanted to be in business, and I really liked the classes that the international school had to offer. Um, so it just seemed like the perfect match, um, to put it simply. Yeah. And what types of roles are you kind of looking at? Um, I'm, like everyone else has said, it's a very versatile role. So. There are so many options out there. It's kind of overwhelming because I like you have to apply to so many different things. Um, so I'm looking at financial analyst positions just because I have experience in the finance industry through my internships. Um, I'm also looking at human resources just because it seems interesting to me. Um, I'm looking at management development programs, um, some sales roles, um, just kind of all over the board. Hi, I'm Katie. I'm a senior here at DU. Uh, this is actually my last week ever of college. Um, yeah, never. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I had a lot of internships. I definitely was an international business major starting out, and I had no idea what I wanted to do with it. Um, I interned at the Colorado Secretary of State's office. I've interned at a bank. I interned for a tech startup out of California, and now I'm interning for the World Trade Center in Denver. So I've kind of been all over the place. Um, after college, I'm gonna be doing a management training program at a bank here. Um, I really liked the finance stuff when I started going through it as well, and I picked it up as a minor. My second major is German, and I studied abroad in Berlin for six months. So, awesome. yeah, I think I covered everything. Yeah, so these guys are really good examples of you know internships helping you find a focus, trying different things. If you're not sure, if you know you like the major and you're not sure, what area to focus on, internships are so helpful, figuring out not only what you do like, but what you don't like. And then also you'll hear that they kind of picked different focuses based on those internships and 
they had really good study abroad experiences, they interned abroad, so um, that's why I picked them as examples. <laughs> they're doing everything we wanted them to. So what questions do you all have either for us or for our students up here? Well, here, I'll, I'll ask you a question. Uh, so, so what what should you be looking at to keep up from a media standpoint on what's going with what's going on internationally? Is that our question or for them? It's for anybody. Okay. <laughs> So it's a, a U.S.-based news service. Anything else? Who's heard of The Economist? Right, so where's The Economist published out of? Anyone know? So it's out of the U.K. So it's the premier kind of weekly news magazine. So you can look at, you have to subscribe to it. It's not for free but you either get it in paper or you can look at it on the web, right? And it is covers everything from politics to economy. There's every week there's a section on the US, there's a section on China, um, Europe, right? Pretty much covers everything in the world that's going on from a business perspective. So if you wanna know, and if you wanna be in international business and you don't enjoy reading the stuff that's in The Economist, might be the right choice for you. Just something to think about. So, but very useful to be familiar with it and look at it on a regular <coughs> basis. You might be able to access it through the library. I'm not sure. Oh about yeah, absolutely. That, we'll have a copy yeah, here. The for library sure. usually has you know freer, reduced price. They have a student discount too. The Economist. It's like two dollars an issue or something like that. Yeah, that's a very good price for it. I'll show you guys something. Yeah. Did you guys get your internships abroad from studying abroad, or was it like separate? Like, how did that work? Um, it was completely separate because they were in two completely different locations. Yeah. I didn't have an internship abroad. The only international internship I really had is with the World Trade Center, and it's here in Denver. So, yeah. So, are you guys finding that, um, I guess you guys both sound like you're trying to go to jobs right out of college, but like, are a lot of people ending up having to go into grad school, or how prepared are you for a job right out of undergrad? So um, I start uh, my job in the middle of May. Um, one of the things at the World Trade Center, I work with a lot of other interns. This is my, I've been there for almost nine months now, so there's been a lot of interns coming in and out. The majority of them, actually all of them except me, have been in international studies. And basically with international studies, you have to go to grad school. There's a lot, there's not a whole lot you can do with an international studies degree unless you want to start like your own nonprofit. But with business, you at least have a BSBA and then you can do a lot more with that. And so in my case, like I'm not going straight into my international dream job, but I'm using it as a way to build up knowledge about like anti-money laundering and um, banking and stuff like that and hoping to work for some, a company like Western Union or um, JP Morgan or something that's like bigger. So with a business degree, you can at least get in with a company that will allow you to kind of go somewhere else, which is, I think, what that guy was doing that they were talking about before. So, but, and some people do go to grad school if they, like, know exactly what they want to do, but with grad school, you really have to know, like, specifically what you want to do with your career before you go into it. Yeah, what we sometimes see, like, both of them mentioned that they found an interest in finance as they went along, and so if that happened to you, but you didn't take finance until, you know, senior year, that might be something that you consider pairing your undergrad international business major with a master's of science in finance and then going out and being qualified for both you know the, the broad understanding of the business world and the deep understanding of a specific unit within it but again that's also what a minor can do for you too and so it's really it's hard to say take classes in as many things as you can because you have limited space but really do try to explore different areas as you find what you're interested in so that if you do find there's something that you could go to graduate school for you know, down the road, then you know that early on so we can plan for it or look at a job and then grad school, which is what I always recommend. Yeah. And I would say as far as the internships abroad go, um, when you're searching for your study abroad experience and looking through all the different programs, there is a tool, there's a filter when you're looking through them where you can actually select um, ones that help you find internships. So I've had students who apply for 
they send in an internship application through the school they're going to, and then the school helps them find something. And I, I don't know how common that is, but they do exist. So if that's something that you're really looking to do, um, I, I know that some of the schools will help you do that in certain locations. So that's helpful. Yes? I have a question. Um, for students like us, already an international student in the States, mm -hmm. um, if we apply for internships in the States, would that consider as be, you know, like international interviews or go back to China? It depends on where you want to work. <laughs> I mean, you'll have experience in two different areas, so I guess that would technically be international experience. Um, if you do start looking into that, though, make sure you talk to the I house. I just want to give that kind of disclaimer because there's a lot of steps yeah. you have to take with, I'm sure you've heard all about that already, but. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think getting experience here, if you've got some experience in other countries is good. But I've seen students go back home and do internships back in China or their home country as well. So anyway, but I think it's good to get a perspective here if you can. What else? Okay, I know this is a lot of information. Um, if you're still kind of going back and forth about your major, um, come talk to career services, talk to your academic advisors. We can help you talk through, you know, what are you interested, what are you not interested in. Um, we can help you take career assessments that can be good conversation starters and help you find out, okay, what types of careers match with my interests. Um, it won't necessarily spit out a career at you and tell you to, you should do this, but it's good. It's kind of good to see what comes out of those and have a conversation about it. Um, to make an appointment with one of us, either academic or career, go to the student tab in Pioneer Web, and you'll find it all there. You can also call the main career center. There's someone over there who sees with, who meets with international studies students. So if you're kind of going back and forth between international studies or international business, um, they can give you some perspective on that as well. Um, but anything that you guys want to add? Okay. Make sure you checked in with us so you get your DPDP points. Um, and then make sure you grab a handout if you didn't do that. Thanks, you guys.